Hey guys, Gassy TV here with another Path of Exile video, and in this one, let's talk about Unwavering Vision. Unwavering Vision is one of the new Atlas Tree passive keystones that makes you unable to drop scarabs, and you're unable to juice your maps with fragments other than Divine Vessels. However, it grants you 20 Atlas passive skill points. Now, I want to make it very clear because a lot of people have been under the assumption that specking this will give you 20 Atlas passive points to your other Atlas trees that you have since you can have three different templates. Let me squash the rumors and say it's not going to work. However, it will give you 20 Atlas passive points to use in this tree. Now, if you do want Scarab to drop again, make sure you take this node away. Don't forget about it. Do you want to be ready for the next generation of ARPGs like Path of Exile 2? Or are you just looking for a computer to make sure you can watch your favorite streamer getting drenched super wet in a French-made outfit in that sweet, sweet hot tub? Well, either way, Starforge has you covered. As you might know, Starforge system offers the best PCs in the entire universe. All PCs are built by hand in Austin, Texas by experienced builders who are passionate about what they do. Starforge is also now offering custom cases and plate lights, whether you want to build a PC yourself or take on the Voyager PC to the next level. I can't believe I got this far into the video without making a dick joke. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Anyways, the logo is definitely a big cock. Hammer. Logo is a hammer. Kickies, make sure you cut this out. Head over to starforgepc.com slash gassytv to get the best PC in the universe right now. How good will this node then be to actually rush? Now, here's the problem with this. The changes they've done to the Atlas tree is very simple. The initial nodes will give you 2% chance for one monster in each of your map to drop an additional connected map. These are very strong early game to get yourself map drops. But the nodes up here are now providing you increased drop chance of scarabs, which this node is avoiding. This means that even though this node is attractive to rush, one should not bum rush it. The recommendation then would be very simple. I would say that you would start the node progression straight up north and pick up the actual nodes of these two keys or no notables. Expect the unexpected to get scouting reports to get more Kirok missions is a very good way to help you with map progression. The commission of officer allows you to get an additional Kirok mission every day and 3% chance when you clear a map to get an additional mission as well. I would also recommend picking up Shape in the World to get yourself increased drop chances of maps as well as the connecting nodes. Now that we put these four points in, you are in a position where you're farming yellow or the end of yellow, oh, sorry, white tier maps. And this is where we are going to essentially waste 12 passive points to get here. So I would put 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Now these nodes here, these are 5 nodes that gives you increased quantity of maps dropped. The three, sorry, the 4 points here gives you scarab drops which are completely voided by this node. And then the remaining 3 increases the effect of modifiers on your maps. So these nodes are very wasted at this point. However, now we have gained 20 passive points. So the initial 12 points are now going to be invested into nodes such as the, um, the Shape in the Skies. This is an investment of six nodes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can't even count. Seven nodes. These could have been specced instead of your wasteful pathing, which means you lost this progression whilst you were getting your way up there. That's seven out of these 12 wasted nodes. And if we then do a quick search and look at map drops, I can't even do that. Um, sorry, to drop maps found, you'll see that the nodes we're now going to be picking up are somewhat spread, but we're going for the notables. That's seven points. We'll take this keystone, which is completely irrelevant. That's eight. Then we'll take these three, which is 9, 10, 11. And now we're almost at the point where our wasted path has been uh, basically recovered, which we'll do by taking this. Since the path of 12 wasted nodes turned into 20, we now have eight free points to spec, which is now at a point where we are going to start nibbling into the end of yellow maps and want to start progressing red tier maps, which means that this little surge will give us a huge amount of extra drop rates of new maps. 
by spending the 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 to shape in the mountains. Now that we've taken every single notable here in the early stage for map dropping, we will be spending points into the early stage routing nodes. The reason for this is because they drop the two or gives you 2% increased chance for a monster in each of your maps to drop an additional connected map. 17 means we get three of these for free, uh, which is actually very, very, very good to do at this point of the uh, progression. And the initial stage of wasting your 12 points happens at a time frame where Kirek missions and scouting reports is going to carry your drop rates of map progression very easily. And then once you get the keystone, these extra eight points you get for free is going to help a lot. At this stage, what we normally would do is to do the adjacent map drop, drop chance nodes is the ones we're looking for. There is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 nodes that we want to pick up. And then we could go for these extra ones on the side, but these are the ones that we're going to pick up early on. In the past, we've been using a keystone called Wandering Path. It's been absolutely insanely broken for the sake of early game map progression to drop as many maps as possible and progress this very, very effectively. Since this is gone in the 3.24 Necropolis League, we are now going to be doing this little progression for Kirik missions, get the, in, uh, the shape in the world and the adjacent connecting nodes, then bum rush to Unwavering Vision, which allows you to spec into the remaining nodes here in the big circle in the middle, the uh, shape in the skies, progression out on the right side to get shape in the mountains, and then start picking up the adjacent map drop chance nodes. Again, like I mentioned before, do keep in mind that if you're looking to start dropping scarabs, I would recommend not using this tree since the keystone prevents dro uh, the drop rates of scarabs. Another thing to point out is that 3.24 Necropolis League is bringing in the very attractively looking tier 17 maps. One more tier than we've normally been able to engage with for the most part in the past couple of years. What this means is that the structured mechanic around this is that every keystone or void stone that you get from the game gives you a 0.5% increased chance of turning a tier 16 map drop into a tier 17. That means that you can have a total of 2% as you're progressing. Uh, we were also informed that for each tier 17 drop that you do get in a map, you will have a lower chance of dropping another tier 17 in that map. It is also confirmed that whilst you're running a tier 17 map, you are unable to drop another tier 17 in such a map. That this means is that the idea is for players to farm tier 16 endgame content and eventually drop a tier 17 to then have that as an aspirational endgame content to engage with, to only to go back to the tier 16 to farm another one. For the trade league and is like myself, this means that it is very likely that we end up with a possibility of actually farming tier 17 maps. Which means that depending on the prices of these tier 17 ones, we might want to run an endgame Atlas tree setup that is focused on actually dropping as many maps as possible to increase the amount of chances for us to turn that tier 16 into a tier 17 that we either run or then sell. That is all I have for you today with this video. I'm actually very excited about Unwavering Vision. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe for more content. Leave a comment down below if you are going to start with Unwavering Vision as well. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. So till then, as always, stay safe, keep rocking.